hello student this is second lecture of the chapter polynomials so today we are going to discuss about the important concept of polynomials uh, which is zeros of polynomials so what do you understand by zeros of polynomials so uh, the definition a roughly definition uh, is like this for a real number so for a real number alpha which is written as alpha you know alpha if p of alpha equals to 0 then alpha is called the zeros of the given polynomials p of x so this definition means so let me explain this way suppose you are given any polynomials p of x then if you replace if you substitute x by any number remember any real number such that the value of whole polynomials reduces to 0 that is p of alpha equals 0 then that value which we have replaced in place of x will be called the 0 of the polynomials p of x so let me give two examples so that is clear to you so example 1 Suppose we have a polynomials p of x equals to 3x plus 5. Okay, so this is our given polynomials and you will see that your x is variable. So variable means you can keep any numbers in place of x. So let me think about a number such that if I replace that number by uh, this x by that number so that the value of this whole polynomial should be 0. So let me think about x equals to minus 5 by 3. So that means I am going to replace x by minus 5 by 3. Let's see what happens. So p of, so x is replaced by minus 5 by 3, which is equals to 3 times. I am not going to write x again because x is replaced by this number. So minus 5 by 3 plus 5. So here 3, 3 will cancel and here minus 5 is left plus 5. So minus 5 plus 5 will give you 0. So we got 0. That means if I replace x by minus 5 by 3, the value of all polynomials reduces to 0. So this is what we require. So Therefore, we can say that actually this number, this number is called 0 of the given polynomials, this one. So, I think you have understood what do you mean by zeros of the polynomials. Okay, let me give you one more example. So, suppose we have a second polynomial such so this, p of x equals to x square minus 2x minus 8. So, we are looking for the zeros of these polynomials. So, you know this one. Let me take x equals to 4. Minus 4. x equals to minus 4. Oh, sorry, not minus 4. Let me check with plus 4. So, let us replace your x by 4 p of 4 equals to x square minus 4 square. So 4 square minus 2 into here again by 4 minus 8. So let us simplify it whether we will get 0 or not. Finally you should get 0. 4 square is 16 minus 8 minus 8. So which gives you 16 minus 8 is 8 minus 8. So 8 minus 8 is 0. Definitely we get the 0. So that means this number 4 is 0 of this given polynomials. Let us see. check another value of so x equals to minus 2. Again, I am going to replace this x by minus 2 and we will check whether the whole value of whole polynomials will come 0 or not. So I will do it again here. p of minus 2 equals to x square is minus 2 this time minus 2 square minus 
2 times x. So 2 x is here now minus 2 minus 8. So you'll get here 4. And you know this one, negative square is positive. So 2 square is 4. Negative 2 into negative 2 will be positive. That is 2 to, 2 to, the, uh, 2 to the 4 minus 8. So 4 plus 4 will be 8 minus 8, which is equals to 0. Again, this time also, the value of polynomials reduces to 0. That means, this number minus 2 is also 0 of the given polynomials. In fact, our polynomials can have more than 1 zeros. So in this example, you see that the 0 of these polynomials are 4 and minus 2. I hope you have understood what do you mean by 0 of the polynomials. Now, in next section, we are going to study about uh, 0 of polynomials and its relationship with coefficients. Now, I will tell you how to find the zeros of different polynomials. So here I have taken uh, linear polynomials. So our intention is to find the zeros, to find the zeros of linear polynomials. So you know this one, the standard form of linear polynomials is like this, it looks like this, ax plus b. So remember, your x is a variable, a and b, so these are coefficients, or these are, these are the real numbers. So I have written here where a and b are real numbers, provided a should not be equals to 0. So here, you cannot take a equals to 0 because if you take a equals to 0 then the polynomials will be no more linear polynomials. So here our intention is to find the zeros of linear polynomials. So what you do is, so the first step we will write the linear polynomials, so this is your linear polynomials and will equate to 0. So remember, we'll take the given linear polynomials and we'll equate to zeros because we have to find the zeros of the polynomials. So that's why I'm equating to zero. So if you solve this equation, then you will get this one. Ax equals to, so if I move plus b that side, another side, it becomes negative b and you know the sign will change. Or x equals to minus b over so a will come down that is a so actually so this one minus b by a it is nothing it is actually the zeros of the given linear polynomials so let me come to a specific questions of this one so here i'm going to write one linear polynomials 3x plus 5 so we need to find out the zeros of these polynomials and I have told you the first step is to equate the given polynomials with zero. So then in second step we are going to move plus 5 another side so it becomes minus 5 so x equals to so now this 3 will come down below 5 so this one so actually this number we have got minus 5 by 3 is nothing it is Given polynomials. Given polynomials. Given polynomials. So, so in this section, we are going to talk about the relationship between zeros and the coefficient of quadratic polynomials. So remember quadratic polynomials. And you know this one, the standard form of quadratic polynomials look like this one a x square plus b x plus c here a b c so these are actually the coefficients and x is a variable so if you uh, see this one carefully so a is coefficient of x square b is coefficient of x and c we can take it as a constant term so this is the standard form of quadratic polynomials and the degree of quadratic polynomials is 2. That means the maximum number of 0 we get 
from quadratic polynomials is 2. So that two zeros we have considered it as a alpha and beta. So let me tell you this one this quadratic polynomial must have two zeros we don't know which uh, they are but we can imagine the first zeros as alpha and the second zeros as beta then there is a relationship between these alpha and beta alpha beta a b and c so i mean to say alpha beta are zeros so there is a relationship between zeros and a b c these are coefficients and the same thing uh, the relationship can be written like this so alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a so alpha plus beta so alpha and beta are the zeros and b and a so these are the coefficients of the quadratic polynomials so alpha plus beta means sum of zeros sum of zeros is always equals to negative coefficient of x coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square and there is one more relationship uh, which is alpha into beta so alpha times beta will be always equals to c divided by a so here c is the constant term which uh, the number which comes at the last without any x term so c divided by a is again a coefficient of x square so so in this section you should know these two things first one is the standard form of quadratic polynomials second one is the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient of the quadratic polynomials let us move on the questions okay so see this question find the zeros and verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients so we have given the three questions so first is this one x square plus 7x plus 10 so this is a quadratic polynomials so what you do is that you need to find the zeros so we are going to find the zeros of these polynomials and in second we need to verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients actually there are two questions uh, for this given polynomials similarly this is also a quadratic polynomials you can see t to the power square but remember here instead of x we are given t so we have to assume t as a variable so uh, it depends on the question sometime uh, most of the time the variable is given x but in some question it may be given y it may be given t it may be given u so in third question you see that instead of x we have a u as a variables but the question is same you need to find out zeros of all these polynomials as well as you have to verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients so let's move to first question so we are going to do the first part finding the zeros of this given polynomials so I have told you so well finding the zeros of a given polynomials the first step is always to equate the given polynomials to zero so that is x square plus 7x plus 10 is a given polynomials will equate it to 0 now uh, let us simplify this left hand side okay so how to simplify this left hand side and you know this one uh, one of the process is middle term splitting you must know middle term splitting okay so let us do middle term splitting so in the middle we have 7 okay so x square plus now we can write 7x as a 5x plus 2x plus 10 equals to 0 then you see there are four terms x square 5x 2x and plus there are four terms first we will group the first two terms and last two terms together okay so we look common from this first two terms so clearly x is common so x plus 5 is left inside the bracket plus now in next two terms 2 is common so x plus 5 which is left inside the bracket which is equals to 0 now again if you see this one here x plus 5 x plus 5 is common we'll take it out 
and what is left is x plus 2. So we have factorized the given quadratic polynomials into two factors x plus 5 and x plus 2. Now if you solve this factor then you will get the zeros. So let, let me solve the first factor here x plus 5. I am going to do here either x plus 5 equals to 0. So that means x equals to minus 5 or if you simplify the second factor x plus 2 you will get x plus 2 equals to 0 or x equals to minus 2. So actually these two value of x minus 5 and minus 2 they are nothing it is a zeros of the given polynomials. So we have found the zeros of the polynomials. So we'll write here therefore minus 5 and minus 2. So these two are zeros of the polynomials, this given polynomials of the poly let me write of the given polynomials. So we have completed the first part of this question, finding the zeros, we got it. Now we will we'll move to second part to verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients. So let me do here. So let me write here verification. So verification means we are going to verify the relationship. Okay. So I have just uh, told you just a little bit uh, earlier that quadratic equations have two zeros and these two zeros are called alpha and beta so we have got the two zeros minus 5 and minus 2 actually these are alpha and beta so you can write here alpha is minus 5 and beta is minus 2 because these are the zero, two zeros and one more thing we have to see the coefficient so uh, let me recall you the given polynomials here the given polynomials was x square plus 7x plus 10 so if you compare this given polynomials with standard form then it is clear to you that a is nothing coefficient of x square so which number is there in uh, before x square so definitely 1 so a equals to 1 and b equals to 7 similarly here c equals to 10 so actually these are the coefficients of given polynomials how i have found is simply compare the given polynomials with a standard form and you clearly see c equals to 10 b equals to 7 and a equals to here it should be 1 now there are two relationship between zeros and the coefficient that is alpha plus beta sum of the two zeros must be equals to minus b by a so what you're going to do is simply we'll replace alpha beta b and a in this equations or in these relations so let me replace alpha by minus 5 here plus beta by minus 2 I am simply replacing their values minus b b is your 7 by a is your 1 so minus 5 so if you uh, open this bracket so you know this plus into plus into minus will be minus 2 equals to minus 7 by 1 which is equals to so minus 5 minus 2 will be minus 7 equals to so this side also minus 7 so it is clear to you the both side of the equations comes equal so left hand on left hand side you got minus 7 on right hand side you got minus 7 if both side comes equal then we have verified the first relationship between zeros and the coefficient so you can write here verify 
by it. So the first relation is verified. So this relation, alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a, we have verified. Now similarly, we can verify the second relation also. The second relation says that alpha times beta equals to c by a. That means if you multiply the two zeros, that must comes equals to c divided by a. So let me replace their values from here. Alpha is minus 5, beta is minus 2. So alpha is minus 5, multiply with beta minus 2 equals to c. c is here 10 divided by a is 1. So let me multiply these two. Minus 5 into minus 2 will be plus 10. So negative multiply with negative will be positive. So minus into minus is plus. So 5 into 2 is 10 equals to 10. So no need to write 1. So here also we got both sides of the equation equal. That means we have verified the second relationship with 0 and the coefficient. So you'll write here verified. So this way we have solved these questions. First we have we have to find out the zeros, then second you have to verify the relationship. Okay, let's come to second question. So this one, t square minus 15. So here, uh, this is a quadratic polynomial since we have a power 2 and variable is t, it's not x this time. So the question is, we need to find out the zeros of these polynomials as well as we have to verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients. So let's first find out the zeros of this one. So t square minus 50. So I told you the first step is to equate the given polynomials to be zeros. Now we have equated it to zeros. Now how to factorize this polynomial? See, here is not, no need to do middle term splitting because we don't have middle term. So we simply solve like this t square. If I move minus 15 that side, it, it become plus 15. So taking square root of this plus 15, we have square root of plus 15. So remember, when you are taking square root, uh, the two numbers will come that is plus and minus. So again, look this one. If I remove square, you have to put square root over right hand side. And whenever you take a square root of any number, there are always two numbers. One is positive and another one is negative. So actually here, there are two zeros. One is positive root over 15 and another one is negative root over 15. Therefore, we got the zeros. Positive root 15 and negative root 15. So these two are the required two zero. Are required zeros of the given polynomials are the two required zeros so definitely you can take first zero as a alpha and this one as a beta so the second part is the verification part so i'm going to do here verification so is a recall that previous one Alpha. Alpha is nothing. The first is 0 of this polynomials, which is plus root 15. And beta is the second zero, zeros, that is negative root 15. And so we need to find out the coefficients a, b and c. So for that one, let me take the given polynomials. So this is our given polynomials, t square minus 15. So well, uh, with uh, comparing with the standard form, so we have this one. See this is standard form and the given polynomials. So you can imagine this instead of x, you can take t square, like t square here t. It doesn't make any difference. So t square t square. So a should be equals to here one. So a is one. B equals to so here b term is missing this middle term is missing so you can take b equals to zero so remember if this uh, some terms are meeting um, some terms are missing then you can take the value of that coefficient is zero then c c is the last constant term c equals to negative 15 so don't forget to write the sign of 15 so negative 15 now we 
we will verify the first relations in alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a. Let us replace the values of alpha, beta and all this one. Alpha is root 15 plus beta is minus root 15 equals to minus b. So b is 0 here divided by a is 1. So root 15 so plus into minus is minus equals to negative of 0. So 0. 0 by 1 is 0. So it will cancel to give you 0 equals to 0. So here we got both sides of the equation equal that is 0 and 0. So we have verified the first relationship. Now let's come to second relationship that is alpha into beta equals to c by a. So again we will do the same thing. We will replace the value of alpha, beta, c and a here. Alpha is root 15 multiply with beta minus root 15 equals to c minus 15 so you can check here c is minus 15 over a is 1 so 1 so if you multiply this one you will get minus 15 so minus root 15 root 15 will give you 15 and minus i will come here so minus 15 no need to write 1 so here also we have got both sides of the equation equal. That means we have verified the second relationship also. So this way we will find the zeros of quadratic polynomials as well as we can verify the relationship between zeros and coefficient. I hope you have understood how to solve this kind of questions. So as examination point of view, so these questions are very very important. So uh, you need to practice maximum number of questions uh, to develop confidence uh, regarding these questions. So thank you.